this video, I'm going to be talking about how to use the cosine graph to answer questions. Now, if you've already seen the equivalent video for the sine graph, this will hopefully be very similar. Because we've already said that the sine graph and the cosine graph are very closely connected. In fact, they are just translations of each other. So if I have a cosine graph, I can tell this is a cosine graph because it's got a y-intercept of 1 rather than 0. I could ask a question like, well, what is cosine of 80? Approximately. And I would just need to read it off the graph. So I find 80 on the x-axis, which is around here. I then go up to the line and read off what that gives me on the y-axis. And that looks like approximately 0 0.2. So cosine of 80 is approximately 0 0.2. Now that's great if we're going in that direction, if we're trying to find a y value given an x value. But of course, sometimes we want to go the other way. So we looked at, in sine graphs, questions a little bit like this, but with sine instead of cos. And we came up with a system. Now that system is going to work exactly as well with questions involving cosine. So I'm just going to restate that system now. We are first going to sketch the cosine graph. Every single time we are going to sketch the cosine graph. Then we are going to highlight the domain that we're talking about. Then we are going to draw in the lines y equals c and the lines going from the x-axis to the graph just to measure off the graph. Then we are going to use our calculator to find one of the solutions for the inverse cos. And then we can use our graph to find the other solutions. So, if I've got a question like this, cosine of x is 0 0.3. x is between 0 and 360. What is x? I can follow those five stages. Number one, I'm going to sketch a cosine graph. Number two, I'm going to highlight the domain I'm talking about. So it says here between 0 and 360. So I'm going to highlight that domain. Three, I'm going to draw in the lines y equals c. So in this case, y equals 0 0.3. And the lines going from the graph to the x-axis to mark where I'm talking about. Number four, I'm going to use my calculator to find the inverse cos of, in this case, 0 0.3, which is approximately 72.54. And then I'm going to use my graph to make sure I'm finding the actual solution. So here I can see that that is about 72.54 there. So that must be the solution that's referring to, which means I need to find this one over here. So I've already got 72.54. I need to find whatever this one is over here. Well, I can see that I can see that this distance here is going to be the same as this distance over here, which means I'm going to want to do well, this was 360, so 360 take away 72.54, which is going to give me that solution there, 287.46. And those are then my two solutions within that domain. OK, let's see a, another example. If I've got 11 lots of cosine of x equals negative 7, Oh, that doesn't quite look like we want it to look. So before I do anything else, I'm going to divide both sides by 11 so that it looks more like the kind of question I'm used to. Cosine of x is negative 7 11 OK, that's easier. And I can see that x is between negative 180 and 180. And it wants me to find x. So the first thing I'm going to do every single time is sketch a cosine graph. Then I'm going to highlight the domain I'm talking about, in this case here, between negative 180 and 180. Then I'm going to draw on the line that goes through y equals negative 7 over 11, which is down there, and the line's going up to the x-axis. Then I'm going to use my calculator to give myself one solution. So my calculator tells me that the inverse cos of negative 7 over 11 is 129.52. And then I'm going to use my graph to make sure I'm getting the right solutions. Now, the first one is clearly just referring to 
this one. Uh, that is 129.52 there, so that's my first solution straight away. And for my second one, I'm noticing that this distance here, this distance here, is the same as this distance over here. Well, that's just the negative version of going over to there. So actually, I can quite quickly write down that my other solution in this case is negative 129.52. And this is why the graph is useful. I think it's very difficult to just work out that that's the answer I needed. But on the graph, we can see that that's where it is. And we can find the same distances on the graph and find our other answers. OK, now, just as we did for sine, there are what we call identities. There are rules, algebraic rules, that we could use, but I would advise you not to. So if this is x, then up here we've got cosine of x. And so this picture tells me that 180 minus x is going to be, sorry, the cosine of 180 minus x is going to be the negative version of cosine of x. We get something similar for 180 plus x. So cosine of 180 plus x is negative cosine of x. Cosine of 360 plus x is cosine of x. And the cosine of negative x is the cosine of x. So they're the same. So these algebraic, these identities would do the job for us, but I think they're a little bit harder to use. Key points from this video. We can use the graph to find approximate solutions to equations involving cosine. Equations of the form cosine of x equals something have infinitely many solutions. We need to specify a domain. If our calculator gives us one solution, we can use a graph to calculate any others. And the same thing can be done algebraically using the cosine identities.